we could do to the structures of interaction that would allow more empathy and thereby more collective intelligence and perhaps more solutions to the problems we are facing? So it's a tough question, but perhaps to kind of um, soothe the nerves of our, of our <laughs> unpanelists here, we're not looking for them to actually answer this question tonight. Fantastic if it happens. <laughs> we're more looking about uh, more looking at exactly the structures of interaction. What could we do to the structures that either allow or don't allow for empathy to emerge, that either allow or don't allow for collective intelligence to emerge? And this is something we've been thinking about for quite a while, that in fact there may be several types of structures within which we operate, within which we work today, that actually inhibit empathy and thereby inhibit our problem-solving capabilities. This may be one. This is Finnish Parliament. <laughs> Personally, you know, how many have, of you have listened to the Eduskunnan kyselytunti? This kind of uh, discussions they have. <laughs> it's uh, once I was sick at home and I turned on the TV and, and that came on and I just fell into this deep depression <laughs> and despair about the future of Finland because when you look at the interaction that takes place within structure, within this structure, it's you know. Um, there is no quality, <laughs> there is no empathy, and there is no collective intelligence. So it could be that these people are in fact smart, they're in fact loving, caring individuals, but it is this structure that we put them in that it inhibits the intelligence from emerging. They may be really capable, really empathetic human beings, but they're put to work in a structure that does not allow for these qualities to emerge. So it might be that structure is what creates culture. Structure is what permits collective intelligence or does not permit it. And this may be one kind of um, structure we might need to change <laughs> if we want to be better at solving the big problems that we're facing, for example, in Finland. Another structure uh, might be the internet. This is something I was speaking about yesterday, that since digital systems are designed to take human emotions into consideration, they don't allow for this part of empathy to emerge as easily as it does, for example, face-to-face. -face. So when we interact face-to-face, -face, I'm all the time receiving information about your, about your emotions, so I'm able to empathize with your emotions. But if this kind of piece of the puzzle is missing, empathy might become inhibited in digital structures. So maybe we should fix the internet, the structure of these digital systems to allow for more empathy to emerge between people in interaction with, with others. Another structure, and this, this image is horrible on purpose. <laughs> Something I've personally been pretty interested in for a while are these structures within which we operate at work. So I did some digging, some um, research online. It means I googled, I used Microsoft clip art. It was a while ago to see, like, uh, to find out about the roles within which we operate at work. So I was trying to find like how how is the role of um, a boss or a manager represented within our work culture, and this is the image <laughs> of of the boss <laughs> in our work culture. Uh, it's terrible. Why have we created such structures within which we operate? How do these structures permit uh, empathy and thereby collective intelligence in work organizations? Are work roles a structure that we should change? to allow for more collective intelligence to emerge, for example, in work cultures. Are hierarchies in general a part of the structure that we should change to allow for more empathy to emerge? Or competition, is that a structure we should change? So just to kind of illustrate the many types of structures within which we operate that kind of guide the, the interaction that is possible. And lastly, the panel. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Valtteri and Petri and I, we share this common angst about the panel. <laughs> it might not be the most empathy-provoking structure for interaction, yeah? Typically panels consist of, you know, a row of experts um, kind of um, advertising their own expertise, if you want to put it bluntly. And it's not a discussion, it's more, you know, these um, uh, kind of speeches, serial speeches on a topic. So we decided that today we do not want to organize a panel. We want to do something very different. Um, 
And then we started thinking, so what should interaction be like? So what kind of characteristics should we look for in, in the interaction? For example, tonight, so that it wouldn't become a panel, so that it wouldn't become an empathy-inhibiting structure for interaction. And we turn to science. This is something I showed last night, if, uh, if you were here for the talk. This is one study, but it's maybe a nice starting point, that examined the emergence of collective intelligence in the, in the um, in human groups. So they were looking at the problem-solving capabilities of human groups, and they found that collective intelligence best predicts the problem-solving capabilities of a team. It predicts it better than average member intelligence or maximum member intelligence. So it doesn't matter whether there's one genius in the group or not. Collective intelligence is what best predicts whether the team is good at solving problems or not. And then, if you look at how collective intelligence emerges, it comes from the ability of the team members to collaborate, the, the quality of interaction. And then if we look at the, the characteristics of interaction that either give rise to collective intelligence or not, it's things like this. Kind of sounds like just good manners. So the teams within which there were these characteristics and interactions gave rise to more collective intelligence and better problem-solving capabilities. So I propose <laughs> that during the discussion tonight, these will be our rules. It uh, pertains to the people sitting in front as well as the audience. <laughs> so short speeches, no monologues. This will be the last monologue of the night. <laughs> I'm sorry about this, I'm being very un, uh, you know, intelligent. How long is it? What should we agree upon? Three sips of wine. <laughs> Three <laughs> sips of wine, fantastic. <laughs> we don't have any wine. We don't have any wine. Petri, see, fix this. So Petri will be the wine master today, and Valtteri as well. <laughs> Just put the whole box, you know. I see Laura there as well. <laughs> okay, okay. Responsiveness towards others. So in the discussion, we don't want the panel where people talk in, uh, in you know, without regarding each other. If someone says something, it's probably good that it's directed towards the others and that the others respond in some way. It's like basic characteristics of a good conversation. Everyone gets a turn to speak. That sadly might not be possible um, with all the audience members, since you are thankfully so many. But we'll try it at least here in our kind of test bed for quality interaction. More positive than negative commentary. Please, unpanelists. <laughs> We've had several discussions pertaining to how we should do this today. <laughs> Crippling negative commentary on all my ideas <laughs> and choices of font color. <laughs> so today, let's at least be positive towards each other. I'm joking. I love you, everyone. It's okay. <laughs> and lastly, the empathy skills of the people involved predicted the emergence of collective intelligence and good problem-solving capability. So, and po probably empathy or the empathy skills of the people involved explain all these others. So if you're an empathetic person, if you have good empathy skills, you might be more responsive, you might be more willing to be positive towards others and uh, not kind of take all, up all the room with your monologue. So these are the rules for tonight. If I hear someone break the rules, <laughs> bad things will happen. <laughs> I don't know what yet, but you know. <laughs> I'll think of something really nasty. No more wine. No <laughs> more wine. The, best, the worst possible, <laughs> worst possible thing to happen to a Finnish person at least. Okay, so what is going to happen tonight? I would call it a joint exploration of this structure for interaction that we call the panel. So, we don't know what's going to happen. We will start off with a certain structure so something like we have already broken the basic structure of the panel by putting the chairs in a U-shape, not a line. <laughs> so these slight tweaks to the structure that might give rise to more empathy and more collective intelligence. 
we have other um, disruptions in mind as well. Wine might be one of them. Um, but when I say joint exploration, I actually mean it. So we need to do this together. <laughs> I hope that today we discover something new. And whenever we discover something new, it, it means that we learn things. And learning is never comfortable. Learning is never nice or simple or clear. So you might experience feelings of, you know, nervousness, <laughs> of, you know, even agitation or, you know, um, insecurity. But let's take these as signals of learning. This is not about entertainment or just feeling nice. This is about creating new knowledge and new understanding, uh, perhaps new realizations of what kinds of structures permit empathy and better collective intelligence. But we'll start off with really small tweaks. And here's the structure of tonight. This is the intro. I'll be done very soon. Then we'll have 30 minutes for a discussion that takes place here among these people. Maybe you could come and sit over already so I can. So we'll start moving towards the discussion. <laughs> And panel discussions typically start off. <laughs> they're, they're just, you know, they're they're like uh, they're evaluating everything now. So what will it mean in terms of structure if I sit here? <laughs> um, panel discussions typically start off with lengthy introductions of the panelists, kind of, you know, to, meaning to explain their expertise. But we're really not that interested in people's expertise here. We're more interested in the quality of interaction. So I'll just tell who they are. This is Matte. Cheers. This is Oliver. Cheers. This is Jana. This is Catherine. And this is Alex. They are all wonderful individuals, talented, <laughs> smart, beautiful, and so are you. <laughs> so that, I think that's all we need to know about each other. And we're looking tonight for a collaboration. So they'll discuss soon uh, upon the terribly complex topic that I put forth a while ago, for 30 minutes. And as they speak, I'll be writing down some questions that emerge from their discussion. After their discussion, it'll be your turn, since you are equally beautiful and talented and, and, and worthy. <laughs> um, I'll be posing the questions that emerge from these guys' discussions to you so that we also get this collective intelligence to emerge. And the same rules apply to you as, as do to these guys. So short speeches, no monologues, responsiveness, positivity, and, and such, and why. <laughs> so we'll have about 30 minutes for that, and then a wrap up. And we have something special in mind. Um, since this is an exploration, since we are looking for uh, ways to support the quality of interaction and empathy, if we feel that something is not working, we can ask for a meta break, or like a timeout, or a tap out. Anyone can ask for a meta break, and Valtteri, raise your hand. Valtteri and Petri um, will be looking out if someone wants a meta break. Can you ask for the meta break by time outside? So if you notice the quality of interaction getting poor, if you come up with an idea like, hey, we need to you know, turn the chairs around or something else, you can ask for a meta break and, um, and present your commentary and idea. And we might listen, we might not. <laughs> also, the panelists can ask for a meta break. <laughs> panelists can leave if they want to. Please don't, though. <laughs> and uh, this is how we'll proceed. So let's try to create some new knowledge about what good interaction is, um, what empathy is, and how we could support these with the structures within which we operate such as this evening, this on a panel, Petri has a timeout question. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of testing out the meta break here <laughs> to break up your intro. I'm wondering about the orange singular chair there on the, on the stage. Well, it's an open seat. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is, man. <laughs> That's enough. That's enough. Uh, so that's the question, dear unpanelists, dear fellow human beings. Um, it's a tough one. In order to solve wicked problems such as those created by climate change and loss of biodiversity, 
which structures for interaction should become more empathy enabling? Is it the internet? Is it the is it work structures such as these work roles and hierarchies? Is it this um, structure we have in uh, you know in politics that emphasizes uh, competition over collaboration? Structure that guides decision making, consumer choices. These are the questions, but the rest is up to you. Do you want me to leave it here, or can I start writing down? Leave it for now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, we do the shortest straw. Can I show it? We can start. We can start it. Let's listen to okay. Oliver's time out. Who can start? I don't know. Can I start? Jana will start. Jana will start. Hi, everybody. Is it, is it on? Yeah. You need to yeah. find it. Talk pretty no. close. A little bit. Okay. okay. I will talk close. Um, for me, this question was really, really hard, as I haven't done panels. I haven't, I haven't been working about uh, climate change. I'm, I'm, I've been thinking about uh, empathy and, and the interaction. And I, I just, I couldn't sleep one night because I was thinking this question. It's like, this, it has to be destroyed. This question, like, asked in many ways in many little questions and for me the, the main question was um, not like what should we do and, and like the way what question but how like um, the, the quality of interaction and, and like asking more how how do I, I interact with you or, or in, in what tones and, and shapes come, um, does my interaction come? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. She's just making eye empathetic eye contact. Sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> you were watching me. <laughs> okay, well, one of the, I, so, okay, I, um, I tend to agree that you know when I see a question like this, I immediately want to kind of uh, move away from this kind of question because I think it's it's an impossible question to answer. But one of the things that actually we brought up um, last night is I was saying that I have a concern around problem solving in general, um, where I my concern is that um, as humans we try to solve a problem, we think we've got it, and we end up creating like 20 other problems. So one of the things that I'm interested in with empathy in general is um, expanding who we're being empathetic with from a human focus to a focus that includes non-humans. And I include um, inanimate objects among the non-humans. So I don't want to like blame the internet, or I don't want to blame the chairs. Um, I want to include those in the structures that I'm uh, participating in. Yeah. Um, well, I just wanted to very quickly express my agreement with you that uh, behind every, even if we look at like very traditional social theory, behind every structure, in the end, you're dealing with like. Um, no matter how rigid it is, how institutionalized, how even like embodied in the design of ordinances of objects or devices, is, you are dealing with how it enables or disables humans. Well, I, for the sake of simplicity, I will personally keep it to humans. Um, how it enables or disables humans to interact in certain, in certain way. And when I started thinking about that issue, my attention was just immediately drawn, well, honestly, to the first variant of the question, like, is digital media, is the internet in general, the way we have structured communications in it, able to facilitate empathy at all? Or does it more like um, socially enable some more kind of cold and aggressive form of communication? Uh, like ecocentric presentation of the self. Yeah, so in that sense, I kind of agree that we shouldn't be thinking about uh, inanimate objects we should be thinking about the 
users in user representation. Yeah. Sorry, maybe that was too long. Very good. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> um, well, my, my point on that, I think, is to a comparison between uh, abstract thinking and, and concrete. And I think one of the things that we have as humans, or we thought we had that was important, but sometimes better than other species, was abstract thought. And that's something that has been guiding the development of our species for a long time. And it's also one of the things that has become very problematic because it becomes alienating. The moment that we are in the domain of an abstract thought, we're not in thinking about the concrete, and we're alienated from the rest of the world in a way. So I think it, it is the same structure that has been developing towards creating the internet and building our new modes of communication based on abstract language. And my question would be, is there a way that we could shift towards a more concrete behavior and more concrete relationships and a more concrete language that is commensurable with our uh, current system and a current state of interspecies relationships and beyond species in animal world. You haven't spoken so far. <laughs> well, I sit in this chair where I think I feel I don't have to say anything. <laughs> no. Um, okay, so. Oliver. Oliver. Uh, there was a time mark request, so. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking I'm going to save you. <laughs> so please, you see you give a mic. I have just noticed that very often we tend to fill space with words. But sometimes maybe it's necessary to take a break and to allow silence to, to be there for a while. And if nobody has anything to say, then maybe we just can be in silence for a moment without getting stressed about this. <laughs> maybe as long as three wanna, sips of wine. Do you want to do like a silence 10 seconds or something like this? No, just in, I mean, if nobody has anything to say in this very second, Maybe we just allow this to be like that. Very good point. <coughs> Thank you. If somebody disagrees. <coughs> no, I didn't hear anything. There was another. There was another? Was there another time No agreement. Uh, hail for agreement. A hail for agreement. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Maybe my approach and maybe continuing from what you said is um, what for me is here interesting is not even so much to ask I can what are the structures, which structures for the action. Um, actually I think we already know quite much which structures are much better than other structures. So I guess this structure we are in here we all know and we agree that this is not very productive. Um, so my question is rather why we always fall back to those structures. Why don't we? Why, why is it so hard to actually change those structures, which we already know that are much better? Like, and I give you a very concrete example. So, I'm a member of Pixel Egg organization, and Pixel Egg is organizing this whole thing here. You know, um, and it's all about empathy and the structures and blah blah. And within this organization we are not able to you know kind of create a decision making structure beyond the majority rules vote you know i mean next week we have a meeting where we decide on the program for 2017 and we have majority majority rule vote and we know that this is not very productive it alienates probably half of the people it doesn't create kind of collaboration and somehow this is what is for me like the real question. How can we actually implement the knowledge we have about the structures into the real real life working situations? Silence. No, I was just <laughs> 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 but, but, uh, did 
if so we have this. actually time out because if there's a time out, then uh, yeah. you know, please. This, this sounds like a panel, and people are looking at me. I wonder if I should go sit like sit somewhere else. Of course, <laughs> you feel like you're doing. <laughs> Take your notes with you. But wait, why does it sound like a panel? We're trying to keep it short here. <laughs> <laughs> it's set up by the panel. Yeah. Should, what should we change? What should we change? Should we we'll close the circles? Should we I think they should be I think they should come and sit. I think they should, they should come and sit in here in different places all over the place. I agree. I think, I think it's the us and them. Dive on. Think you should be spread out here. Hey, hey, dive on, dive on, dive on. Okay, so uh, one rule which we talked about before this, but I think God didn't say it in the beginning. You're not allowed to speak on top of each other. Take turns. <coughs> so, uh, in order to take turns, uh, keep your marks short, so and then you give space for the other remark. So can we start again without? Okay, so we start from Anna. Yes, first. Yeah, we will. Maybe we were thinking that places are the problem because they are front of us, they are part of us. We were aware of this and we were thinking about various uh, <coughs> mechanics to change this and we left it open. And we want to hear these suggestions from the audience. So now should we do something about this and yeah. what should we do about this? So let's just take a look for me and put one audience member into the yellow chair. Exactly, exactly. Who, or should we like, is somebody volunteer? Should we volunteer or take a lottery? No majority votes though. Yeah, no majority vote. Lottery you or the, selection? No, you be the dictator and then... Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let, let's take, so, so let's take, so who wants to go into the orange chair? <laughs> uh, <laughs> nobody <laughs> wants to go. <laughs> Please, please, please. Thank you, Agnes. Hello. I have another suggestion. Is it Can wrong? I ask, what's your name? Hi. I'm Catherine. <laughs> My name is Agnieszka. Hi. Okay. Hello. Agnieszka. So, where was the conversation? There was a timeout. Oh, another one. Yeah. There's so many timeouts now. So, um, let's take, let's take. Two timeouts. Who went in first? I can see. Um, ah, yeah, sure. This is about the structure of the space. Maybe if you turn on the lights, so they're not yeah. on the stage and we yeah. have the. Yeah, good. Can you change the lights so it's like more illuminated? It would be ugly, but can we. Let's uh, so out. <laughs> No microphones. Yeah. Maybe we uh, like we use microphones if somebody wants to use a microphone. But in general, like it's because you know maybe it's easier to. Not everyone has. Yeah, well, not, not everyone has a, a, a small voice, so it's, it's more democratic if you use microphones. Well, in the power is in the microphone. Yeah. But but anybody can have a microphone. Actually, creating a symbol of power is the definition of fascism, not of democracy. So, yeah. So you're holding a, a, a yeah. symbol of, of power in your hand. You know. Very funny corner, but that's not the point. Time out. Time out. Time out. So, time out. More microphones. More microphones or no microphones? <laughs> this is getting out of hand. Okay. Uh, okay. Kind of like. Okay. Okay. Like, okay. Like, so super. Make up. Make up. Time out. Uh, yeah. Now we need to. Continue with experimentation. And this I'll is the experimentation. But, but John had a timeout already for five, ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay, we got John. I, I, I fail to see how putting an audience member on the stage changes this. This is still the panel. There are six people on stage. I don't know who they are, why they're somehow in a different position than us. Yeah. So as much as we try to make it an on panel, we, we are creating a power structure that we're not going to escape from that. <laughs> yes, this is the, the same question was set up in. So what should we do about what should we do about this? Would maybe explaining a little bit about ourselves and expertise help? No, that would just reinforce the structure as it would yes. kind of reinforce our yeah. master Dixit authority. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. 
since I am the person who was on both sides. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fantastic! I think that the, the circular shape kind of closes us up, so that's why I moved the chair here, and I feel more like facing people. So like a line? Like a line. No, that's fine. Line. But uh, previously we were like almost like this. And then like, the feeling that, that this opening here is very little and we are more like chatting here and you are watching TV, which is like us. This is how I felt when I came here. Okay. May I say something? Yes, please. Yes, please. Now it's Catherine's turn. The idea was to, within this discussion, experiment the characteristics that give rise to collective intelligence. That's why we had this discussion first as a structure. But if you want to open it up into the basic panel discussion structure, that's fine too. We're just wondering like, if we open it up like this, uh -huh. and there is direct interaction with the audience, then that's, that's the panel. But I already feel wrong that you are on my back, and I want to thank you. So then it's like very difficult situation because yes. I feel the same. Hey, it is a timeout now. Yeah, there's a lot of timeouts. But Valtteri made some really good points here, which is uh, basically if you have a timeout which is a problem, don't just throw out the problem. Think about a, a possible solution before you throw out the problem. Hey, can I say but, one thing? But he, uh, uh, yeah, Justin is next. Okay, can so I, I have an experiment. Uh, so instead of sitting in a crescent shape like this, where you're all kind of facing towards each other, what if you face the, if you flip the crescent around so you're all facing away from each other but towards the audience? That's my experiment. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I'm not really sure. I just, I wanted to say what, what was the point of having this half an hour sort of, uh, the, the structure that we presented. This half an hour was a space not for us to act as experts, but I act as people that have question, have these questions, and to provide a space for noise, so that questions emerge. And I think that was why we had these uh, people here, to not more than to give answers, to create the noise so that we all started collaborating in answers. There's a general personal opinion. I think there's been a, there's been this timeout for longer. We have to take a, a timeout breaks at some point but, uh, because there's not anything else except timeouts anymore. And if you can allow for this one last small timeout, and then no, no. Okay. Okay. So. With great respect, I think there's been too much explanation or justification of. Um, reasons for decisions for the evening and it's just kind of circular. So I suggest, and my suggestion is the next time somebody starts to explain why we set things up this way at the beginning, um, the audience starts to hum <laughs> <laughs> or move on. So. Okay. Okay. Not really sure what, how that works out. I agree. But we can hum. Now, please. Uh, yeah, I was just actually going to pose a question directly to the audience that I just wanted to kind of get an idea what the opinions are. But as entertaining as observing these transformations of a discussion space and what would make you, the audience feel more included, how many of you here actually came to hear some nice, interesting constructive discourse on the issues of communication and empathy instead on the discussions of how to structure a panel space. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. All right. So what, uh, what that was a half or less than a half? Um, <laughs> from here it looked pretty split, honestly. Yeah, so, okay, good question. Oh, no. no answer. No yeah, I'm also here for that, just to clarify. I'm on your side. Um, just saying that um, there's a difference between structure and content, and maybe it's clear, good to, as a preparing, it's good to know what are you focusing on, because now we're focusing on structure rather than the content, maybe. 
But then again, content and structure are very much related to them. So um, from, uh, I would suggest that if you did not sit on chairs, the whole issue about where you, you are actually mobile and you can actually change your position whenever it's needed. And also if you look at yourselves in the position you are, you're mostly kind of in a way leaning back or close or and somehow already uh, taking probably 60 to 90% of your empathy cap capabilities away by sitting in a chair. So my suggestion would have been not to sit on the chairs, but as we're very used to sitting on the chairs, I know that is an extremely radical suggestion, which probably is not. I, le I leave this to the panel. What do you think about it? I have a, a question for everyone. Um, so I'm a little bit perplexed as to my role here, uh, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> We had some uh, meeting, we had a meeting yesterday, we had another meeting today, and we talked uh, pretty much exclusively about structure. Um, we didn't really talk so much about um, empathy. So I'm wondering whether at this point we want to talk about empathy, as what would be useful for people? Um, and also, I personally feel like um, I'm, I am sympathetic to the um, architectural uh, conundrum that we find ourselves in. I have only one solution that I think would really um, democratize the space, but it's not a super comfy one. Um, and that would be if everyone sits together up yeah. here on the floor. I that's that's sort of the only way that I can see to Right. But it really involves people sitting on the floor, right? I mean, do people want to do that? I don't know. All the front row, it's like you get it. Yes, they if, if, folks, if folks need some lumbar support, <laughs> they could have the front row or something. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's good. And if you if you have something crucial, like oh my god, that's that wall is on fire, <laughs> then you do the timeout or I am dying out here, you know? Then you do it and then you have some kind of solution for that. That's good. So let's have two things. We have a timeout when it's crucial, and then we have a common where you might have to wait, and then we are Patri or one of the panelists or anybody will actually like wait for that to be spread around. So, and then another comment uh, from Walter, uh, which is really good, is that, and you should say that. Yeah, I'm here now as the fascist, so really important for this whole thing to work is that we still take turns. No parallel discussions. I mean, whispering, that's fine. No true discussions. Yeah, so, so, like, avoid speaking on each other or stepping on uh, the person's so who are you standing next to, which I just did. Please, let's uh, continue. So now that we have, I hope, established like a more, let's call it like democratic discussion space, I just wanted to ask one final question. So anybody here who has um, an idea or a good starting point, if we are going to finally start our discussion on structures of com communication and empathy, does anybody have a particular st starting point that they would consider? All right. I, 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 here you go. Everybody's been talking about empathy as, as something that's kind of over there. Uh, this is empathy. So where there's there's a lot's been there's been a really complex emotional uh, fifteen minutes of frustration, annoyance, 
um, irritation <laughs> fr uh, uh, with, amongst everybody. But in fact, that was a kind of negotiation towards empathy. And I think it's interesting that it's always talked about somewhere else, but in fact, it is this and this and this and this on a collective level. And that's, I think, that's an interesting start. Shall I take bounce back? Yes, yes of course, if you get fine. Uh, well, I think you actually raise a very interesting point. And uh, earlier when we were talking about how we structured the space here with the chair and the crescent and just like the amphitheatrical layout of uh, the audience seats already putting us in some sort of a power structure with certain expectations. I think that at least lead, it leads me to a very interesting question. And so we, when we communicate with one another, when we're utilizing any form of media to communicate, we have certain expectations how communication will occur through that media. And maybe that prevents us from kind of adapting in our communication process to what would be more, let's put it like, emotionally closer or effective in a certain situation. So instead of thinking of communication as something that always operates under certain rules that we never question, should we assume that maybe a more effective form when you communicate with other people, no matter what the platform, is that you always have this sort of a weird negotiation stage where you kind of dis decide what exactly the rules and means of communication for this particular occasion that would be most effective would be. Because yes, there was frustration, there was anger, there was even like slight, okay, I'm gonna leave the stage now because this is useless moment, at least for me. But I think the final result turned out to be better. Yeah, I, I think it's very important to keep the door open for this kind of negotiations of the structure of the communication all the time because I think that uh, many times in this kind of uh, communication situation, smaller or bigger, there is this uh, kind of, uh, the structure is blocking something and it's not clear when it happens, there's just this kind of a feeling of frustration or something is not right and there's no space to discuss about it and if you don't sp discuss about it then you lose the opportunity to to hear what the person who is feeling the frustration has to say so I think it's very important to have this door open for the negotiations it will lead to something new and un unexpected that, it, that this person can provide to the discussion I think, uh, yeah, to comment briefly, hopefully, on both uh, things. I think, I think Katri made this point very early on that maybe learning isn't, you know. I think we learn something about this situation. I don't know if that's applicable to any other situation. Maybe that's not the point, but we learn something about this moment. We learn something about this structure. And it wasn't easy. Maybe it was painful. But I think it was good that we actually went through it, no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Philip. There is a website called uh, armentalkingtomuch.com and it has two <laughs> buttons. So every time a dude is talking, you press the button. And if it's uh, not a dude, you press the button. So it doesn't count sciences. And after 20 minutes, the 76%, including myself, uh, was meant just to throw it there. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was counting, uh, sorry. Yeah. It was counting, uh, uh, including you though. <laughs> 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 with, the, with the fastest machine. <laughs> How many people here think he's a jerk for doing this? <laughs> Does it matter? Sorry, but this is really not relevant. Um, what, what was really not interesting with what you said is that relating to these structures, right? So we have these structures that are working here, which is us together. But if we take that and we look at the internet, for example, the structures are not immediate. Even though we think that structures work in, on, online and in uh, development, because so software needs to be, be developed. So there's a huge process going into development, user experience, yada yada. So this takes you know years of development to get to the point of formalization of communication modes. 
and it does really, because you have to formalize what is exactly what it is that we are going to communicate. What will they communicate when they use the software? So this is something totally, totally outside of how normal people behave. It doesn't work like this. And this, in terms of empathy, I mean, we are talking, so we are interacting immediately. And this sort of interaction in terms of structure is completely impossible in, on the internet. It's, it just doesn't work that way. And uh, I, I don't know if it facilitates or stops people from being empathetic, but it definitely changes the way we need to look at the structure because it's a two, like two different things. Can I ask, like, what, why does it work? How, how does it work now? Like this. Yeah, like what are the, the so things that, that work here? For talking. <laughs> so we, we are able yeah. to talk. Yeah. Like I mean, I just this. Just that we're able to talk and change our mind. There's no there's no platform. There's no thing in between. But the body is the platform. Yeah, the body. Yeah, yeah. so the bodies are here. Yeah, but we okay. can change our mind immediately. You know, okay. Decide that I don't care about somebody saying something idiotic <laughs> because it's not relevant. So let's go to the next question. You know? Okay, I and think and it's for, I have to say one thing. For me, uh, what works uh, here is that I'm able to look into your eyes. Yes. Like I'm able to like really interact. Yeah. But I also I think that we we are actually having insights, and that was a part of the mission of this discussion. Sorry if we're going back to the structure. But but I think we are having insights. Uh, for me, that was a super insightful comment, and a few of the ones we've had so far. That's for me why it's working. We're creating the conditions to be inside as a community. I have a meta comment. I'm confused. I will now still in the panel discussion 30 minutes, or did we expand it to the audience? <laughs> and who is moderating? I can't first. I'll speak to the precious machine. We just. Um, <laughs> We just, uh, the timer went off for 30 minutes and I started the next 30 minutes. So the structure of um, panel or small group discussion and large group discussion has disintegrated. <laughs> and we have apparently collectively decided to do something else that is taking place at the moment. And I need more wine. <laughs> Make it mega fascist. <laughs> Meta yeah. or mega? <laughs> um, who suggested small groups? I agree. Because there is no way that we can you know, examine the characteristics of empathy enabling interaction when you know, so many people are left out of the discussion. There is no like, chance for true responsiveness. Is this a good idea or not? <laughs> uh, this was actually part of our one time plan to do this exact thing, but then we thought it was too complicated, but now things are so complicated, or simple that complication simplicity, simplicity doesn't matter anymore. I, what I was thinking is that this is a challenge, and I think it's a big challenge. Yeah. If we go into small groups, it would be just what we always do, but it's the most important that we, we are able to empathize, empathize with a lot of people at the same time. I, I think it's a good challenge. But just in terms of like now, you know, there's no true discussion because now it's his turn. <laughs> and I would like to respond, but you know, oh. we're so many. Like it's just a sheer matter of time and space, <laughs> of which you are a master, <laughs> and like number of people and like. Uh, I disagree with this. I think that's uh, actually feeling that there is a uh, discussion. Developing them. Yeah, I think we should just uh, go with this, uh, respect the uh, development here, and not always just uh, put this metal in the there. And well, I was actually going to agree with the move with the idea to kind of split the groups, uh, the group into smaller groups, because I noticed that there's at, at the very least two or even like three parallel discussions or tracks of what's starting before form. On one hand, uh, there was the mention of like the line of thought if um, what is well the meaning of empathy in the case of uh, any form of media communication. The other, there was the discussion of whether empathy or this type of emotional communication is used for in the space of the political 
for example, on the third one, somebody at earlier point, I think it was you mentioned the formalization of digital media and how like the notion of user experience design kind of prevents spontaneity and like fluidity in negotiation, which is something that I would be fascinated to talk about in more depth. And I do have to agree that maybe splitting maybe splitting in smaller interest-based groups would result in more provoke a more productive outcomes and conclusions, even if it results in conversations that are splintered into completely different dimensions of this problem. Uh, yeah, I actually go with Mikko. I think that it's good that the discussion is like this, because with a smaller group, I think it's easier any day you can sort of generate that. But it's a rarity of a situation that you have this amount of people in one room actually wanting to discuss something. So even if it's difficult, I think we should stick with this. What does it achieve? I disagree. <laughs> uh, there is a, there is a, I, I agree with Laura uh, on this. Even though it's difficult, this is rare. The other things are very useful. So that's just my opinion. And now, like, what we could do is what Oliver hates, is majority vote. But we don't do that. So what's your solution, Oliver? for deciding this, whether we should split or not. <laughs> of course we should split. <laughs> oh no. No, I mean, let's continue with the timeouts. This is actually a very productive model, I like this. So you actually agree that this is a productive, you don't want the to... The timeouts, I like There's a timeout, there's no. a timeout. Timeout, timeout. <laughs> the wall is on fire. Instead of talking to us, just we make the group, uh, small groups, and uh, just take that people closest to you, three to five persons, and we have a group chat for five minutes, and then we are to do this. That's not a timeout, that's a voice in discussion. But then this is... I'm just asking that, is it typical that we nowadays have these kind of long and meta discussions about how we should discuss more things. Because once I was at the six hour meeting that we used to discuss how do we discuss and how we organize. And we discussed six hours and then we went home and we actually never did the things that the assembly, assembly was for. People are not that comfortable speaking. Like that's what I'd like just now observe. Like if we just like stick to this that we ask for a permission to speak because you know, for me it's easy to speak. I, I know quite a few people here, but if you want to invite like people who are just completely out from this and not all of the people are not that confident of speaking. So if you want to be open for everyone to speak, then we would like, you know, we should like go by the rules, ask ask for permission not to like spread, like uh, respond straight away by shouting <coughs> shouting comments. Ladies think together and probably we will not come out with one result, but we will probably come up with 60 brains and bodies vibrating and simmering and creating thoughts that they all never had before. And probably there is also a collective atmosphere that will be something that we don't know. So we, we might not know now, and we might not know where it will go, but we know that it is something, and we have to trust it, that it is something, and it will go somewhere. And that is the empathy, and that is the trust in the process, and trust in empathy. And that's why neoliberals and fascists do not want to do that, because it's extremely inefficient in a way of not getting a clear result, not getting that railroad done, and that house done, and those people in straight. There is no that rules that will be easy to follow and do the right thing. It's very confusing. You have to take your own responsibility also to take your own